Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dow from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you today in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. We're thanking Him for another time, for another day, for another message that we can uh, speak about Him. The message is all about the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, what he has done, amen, and what he is doing at this present time. And that's where the focus needs to be on at this present time. Because a lot of people, they know a lot about the history. They know a lot about the history and so on. And, and that's mainly where they had him at. Uh, he's history there, history there, or wherever. But come to find out that there was a history, and the history has brought us up to this time. Uh, in the United States, we could talk about George Washington and what he'd done. Well, that was great. He was a great man, and he'd done great things. But that's over. But what about what about today? What about this present time? Well, we're in a mess. But, so, no matter how great the history was, you have to come up here and live where we're living now. So, that's our, that, that word's been lived up. We're down here living the word for our, our time. And that's what we got to, that's what we got to recognize and that's what we got to do and that's what we have to manifest. So, we keep Jesus Christ on the scene because he's been on the scene. He's been on the scene. Well, how do you know? Because he give a word for every day and every age and he come on the scene and he fulfilled, he manifested that word. So that's his identification. That's his proof. So when you see what the word has said and you see what God has done, no matter who he used, it's still, still him, and he's still doing that today. So we thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again. We thank you, Lord, that this day that you've been lifted out of history and you've come on the scene to manifest your word for this time. So, Lord, we're so glad that we have we have eyes to see, we have ears to hear, we have the spirit on the inside that reveals and identifies and helps us to understand, Lord, the very word for our time, our day. So, Lord, we pray that that same spirit this morning, Lord, would come amongst us once again and, Lord, continue to Make yourself known in such a sweet, humble way. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I want to uh, give this a title. And as we maybe go along, you'll see how the title fits in uh, with the message. But at this time, whose side? At this time, because, like I say, we're not living in history, we're living, we're living right now. So, but if you go back to history and you can see how you would act back there, well, that's the same way you're going to act over here. You're going to believe. As you believe back there, you believe the same way over here. And some people, oh, well, you know, I would yell, well, what, you, what about today? This is where we're living today. So what about now? Can you identify yourself with Jesus Christ, the Word, the revelation, the manifested Word of this time, or are you identifying somewhere else? And so, wherever you identify yourself, that, that more or less proves where you are. So, that's what we want to talk about. And we want to go today. I had a, I had a thought on my mind, and just let me express it here real quick. The other day I was reading about, Brother Ram talking about the book of your old life was, was put in the sea of God's for, forgetfulness. 
And so the book of your old life, from the time you said boo, boo, hoo, hoo, until you receive Jesus Christ and become born again, everything, the book of your old life, because now you have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. So the book of your old life, God has taken that book. If you could just imagine this. I've got, I've got your old book in my hand. Everything that you ever did that was against you, now it's in my hand. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw it in the sea of God's forgetfulness. So now... Everything that was ever held against you is gone. You're a, you're a, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're a, a brand new creation. You're starting fresh because this is how you should have come here to start with. But we know what happened in the garden that sold us all in under sin. So now, and then you have to question, well, uh, you know, I... I they said, I've done this in my old life. And I've done... Who are they? They are not the ones that justified you. God said, you are justified. And Brother Brown gave us his definition, which I believe is God's definition. He said, just as you never did it. So, no matter what they say, they don't count. The only one that counts is God Almighty Himself. And He said, it's gone. I can't. He said, I can't even remember it. So all the things you've done under that old nature, because it wasn't given by God, it was permitted by God by what happened in the garden, all of that is gone. And you're starting out fresh, like a newborn babe in Jesus Christ. And forget about those old things. When the devil comes along knocking and brings them all up because he's the one that condemns you all the time, and then his cohorts, they come along and they do the same thing. You, well, you know what spirit is in them. Because the spirit of Jesus Christ is to forgive. Well, he forgives and he forgets. Remember that. So, is everything that was in your old book is gone. I mean, there's not one thing from that old book that's held against you. People just, they think, can't seem to wrap their head around that. But it is the truth. So, Start from this day, move forward in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word. Now, at this time, whose side? There in <clears throat> Matthew 24, and I'm going to read uh, verses 37 through 39. So let's read here. But as the days of... It's, the King James has got it no way, but it's no other. Word. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What? As the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, let's just look at the days of Noah for a minute. Well, there was some old, some old crackpot out there working on this great giant boat. And he was telling the people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rain. It's going to rain so much that we're going to need this, this ark. And the people said, well, the poor old man is out of his head. He's crazy. He's a lunatic. Didn't bother no. He just kept on working on his testimony. Because his testimony was, it's going to rain. And so, all the ones, I mean... You figure all the people that were upon the face of the earth. And, and God chose Noah, said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the only ones that Noah could, could get a, aboard the ark was his family. And, and one of them had a problem. You say, what do you mean? Well, it was Cain. He showed himself. 
So anyway, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Well, what was, what was the example? The whole world would not accept the word that Noah was given. And so what happened? When the time got ready, he finished the ark, and God told him to go in there, and he closed the door, and he sat there, and all of a sudden it started to rain. Well, hello, it was too late. The door can't be reopened. It was shut. And so has it been in this day to a lot of people. Now, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And Anne knew not. They didn't know anything about what was going on until the flood came and took them all away. Now listen, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So, as they didn't know in that day, they won't know in this day. They do not. Well, that sounds like over there in Revelation 3. No, they didn't know. They didn't even know that they was blind, naked, miserable, and so on. They was over there and blind, lay out of sin, and didn't even know it. So, knew not. Well, now, we're talking about as the days of Noah, so shall it be as the coming of the Son of Man. And so, that's a pretty good example there. Well, you're either in, we'll put it like this, you're either in the minority or the majority, one or the other. Now, I want to look over into, because I'm trying to draw some some parallels here, some contrast. So now we want to go to Mark eleven seventeen and see what was happening in Jesus' day. Mark eleven seventeen, and he taught Jesus. He just said, Rabbi, teacher. Yeah, he was a teacher. He was a prophet. He was the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Son of David. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called to of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it. Who is the ye? Who is he talking to? The chief priest and the elders and so on. It wasn't the people. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty strange. No wonder they didn't like him. Because he told them exactly who they were. Because he knew who they were. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy it. Why did they want to destroy him? Because they knew he was talking about them. For they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Doctrine is the teachings. And look at here. You think about almost 2,000 years later, things haven't changed. You come along with the truth out of the old trend of the day and they'll want to kill you. And they'll call you ever name in the book. But did it stop anything? Nope. He kept right on going on, fulfilling the word as he went. Now, I want to get a statement here out of John 8. And this is verse 37. And this is Jesus here speaking. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, well, he said, because they said, oh, we be Abraham's seed. He, he never disputed that because Abraham, he had, he had Ishmael, he had Isaac, he married another woman and had many sons by her. 
So they had the loop, and he could have been Abraham's seed natural. So, so he said, I know you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Well, there's Abraham's seed trying to kill the promised seed that, was, that he talked about. The faith seed, Jesus Christ. Because, now why did they want to kill him? Because my word has no place in you. And that's the same thing today. As soon as you come up with something that's contrary to the old trend, the old denominational beliefs and so on, they, and they'll claim that they're Christians and believers and message believers and everything else. And as soon as you come up with something contrary, they'll want to kill you too. Well, you say, oh, they can't kill you uh, physically. No, they just try to kill your influence. Did it work with Jesus? Well, some people believe him and some people don't. But that was already foreordained. All right, so... The main thing is, my word hath no place in you. And if it didn't in them, it doesn't. If you could transport them, people back there, the ones he was talking to, if you could get them in a time machine and go and drop them over here in 2023, it would be the same thing. Because if it didn't have a place in them then, it wouldn't have a place in them now. Now, I want to get one other statement out of John. This is John 8, 43. And Jesus speaking, he said, Why do ye not understand my speech? Well, why can't you live here? I'm saying this very simple, very plain. Why don't you understand it? Even because you cannot hear my word. What do you mean? They heard it. They asked him questions. It made them mad because they did hear it. But what's he talking about? You cannot hear my word. You don't have an ear to hear. You don't have the, you don't have the equipment to hear with. All you can hear is by your natural, and because it's contrary to your natural, you hate me. You want to kill me. And you will. So... No wonder all through the church ages, Jesus said, He that hath an ear to hear what the Spirit says. Amen. That's the one he was talking to down all through the seven church ages. The rest of the people, they never got it. Because they had nothing to got it with. To them, it was just more crazy foolishness. Now, so we want to, I've got some statements here from Brother Brown, and we want to look into these and kind of just see where we're at uh, at this time, at this time right here, 2023. So I want to start off with this here and recognizing your day in this message there in Jeffersonville, 1964. Jesus said, All scripture is given by inspiration, therefore, that all scripture must be fulfilled. When he, they asked him and said, you make yourself God. He said, well, you in your own law call those prophets who the word of God, who the word of the Lord came to, you call them gods. And they are. Said, then how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? All these scriptures is given by inspiration. All of them must be made manifest all of it must be fulfilled so there they're just so blind they look they are so took up with the word of man instead of being taken up with the word of god and look at here from 64 right down here it's the same thing they're following the word of man old man made stuff and that's what makes the women do that. That's what makes preachers do that. They're taken up with the bishop instead of Jesus. They're taken up with their money bag. Oh, don't go messing with my money. 
You know, if I was to say something like that, I don't, I'd probably lose half of my congregation. Well, would you rather leave half of your conversation, con congregation, or would you rather lose your soul? Well, it's pretty easy the way they take. Oh, uh, my, my congregation would stand for that. Okay, go ahead. You stay with the congregation then. And leave Christ out in the cold. And I was reading <coughs> this the other day, and this is in blasphemous names there in 1962 in Jeffersonville. And Brother Branham, he had a good friend called Joseph Bose there in Chicago, and he'd been to Chicago many, many times, holding meetings, and they had a, they had a great ministerial alliance there in Chicago, and he'd been there many, many times. And the people had saw signs and wonders and miracles, and he had preached the word, and God had vindicated it and everything else. But as usual, let's see what he said. Like Bo Bose said, I've always said, I had a dream years ago that, that God would send me to Chicago and shape Chicago for the glory of God. I said, Joseph, he has already done it. And Father Joseph said, what? He said, Joseph, he's already, already done what? He's already shook Chicago. Why? He said, they haven't been shaken since Moody. Well, Moody's way back there. And I said that I'm talking about the church. That's cannon fodder out there. And there's a lot of cannon fodder out here today. That they're just dust of the earth. That bunch cramming through the streets, painted Jezebels and everything, I said, that's out there. Them old Bengal lodges, church lodges, those old lodges and things will crumble and fall into the streets there. I said, he's talking about the church. Well, he ain't shaking Chicago natural. He's shaking the believers to shake them awake. Uh-huh. The church has seen the revelation of Jesus Christ made manifest and they wreck it. Who, who did the church seen it? The believers, the predestinated ones. They seen because God sent this for a purpose. He said, there may not be 15 out of Chicago. Whew, I bet your old Joseph said, my goodness. They're not, he said, there may not be 10 in this generation out of the whole city of Chicago come in. Well, my goodness. He said, did you ever think of it? As the days of Noah, so, will, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man, wherein eight souls were saved. Uh-huh. How many come out of Sodom? Question. Well, I know. There was, there was four started out, and only three got out. Hmm, not very good odds, huh? See what I mean? I doubt there will be a handful, see? But the church itself has received the shaken. And look here. This day, the, the believers, the predestinated, the elected, they have been shook. The seventh seal shook them awake. Oh, yeah. The, sh the seventh seal shook some up. And the seventh seal shook some off. So there's been a shaking. Because when God comes on the scene with His Word and fulfills and manifests it, it does the shaking. And the people, how many people in Chicago recognized it? Not very many, according to what Brother Bram said. He said, but the church itself had received the shaking. They recognized it. They know the words. They seen the word, and when it was being materialized, well, how was it being materialized? There was a prophet that was bringing the word to life right before them. What God said would happen, happened. 
It would be like taking the Word of God and making it into a movie and seeing it right before your eyes. But did everybody see it? Did everybody have eyes to see and ears to hear? Evidently not. And they caught it. Now look at that for a minute now. And this first message, when they'll see it, everybody rallied, rallied for it. Said, oh, glory to God. Oh, if I could see this and the other. And they go right away the same way they come in. Okay, they see all these things. They say, glory to God. And they, they go out just like they come in. Like it was, like it was an entertainment. And now they think, well, I don't know. Where could you join? If I don't come to this, it'll be this way, and I'll be kicked out over here, and I won't have nothing here. Brethren, sat down and say, well, what would I do? See here, they won't stop long enough to recognize it's a word that God promised being manifested See, and they walk away. How many has walked away in this day? You, oh, yeah, by, about all the time. And then, not only do they walk away, they come back and condemn the thing they said they believed. Call it false and, and heresy and makeup and everything else, no matter how much proof. It just, and what does it prove? It proves that the Word has no place in them. They heard, but they didn't hear. Because there is a difference. Jesus said so. Now, at this time, whose side? Well, if we could just get the people to stop and listen and think. But look at here. We're going to read something here in a, in a little bit. And we'll find out exactly what's going on. Now, then Jesus came and called. Well, that's, that's exactly what he done this day. Jesus came and called. Well, it just so happened the call come through a different vessel. But it's still Jesus. Jesus was a physical man, born of a virgin. And he come here and had a life. But his mission was to go to the cross and die to save us and take care of the sin question once and for all. And then he said, I come from God, I go back to God. And he, he, he said, I'll be with you, even in you to the end of the world. He come back on the day of Pentecost as the Holy Spirit in the people. And you can't find anywhere where he ever left. Because he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm going with you all the way. Now listen to what the prophet says here. Then Jesus came and called there in Tampa, 1964. God takes his man, but the Spirit, capital S, lives on. That makes Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God takes his man, but the Spirit lives on. And so, when, when that makes, he said, that makes Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because it's still Christ. And that's all the people could see back in Jesus' day. That was God manifested in the flesh. But all they could see was that little man. And everything that he did, they shoved it off to somewhere else. Hmm. He took Christ Jesus, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, come 
back. He has been upon the people in the church all down through the ages. Did you hear what he said? So Jesus the Spirit has been through here all down through the ages. See, because God takes his man but not his spirit. Now listen, Satan takes his man and you find them same spirits watch their nature. Well, look here, you can that quick. I don't care what somebody comes up and says they're a believer. You just look at their nature. See, just, just see how they answer a question. Just, just see how they jump and how they'll get on you and they'll call you every name in the book. Because I have just as much right to my opinion as they do theirs. So, Satan takes his man and you'll find that Brother Brown said them same spirits from th that was over on, on that insane man on the gatherings was the same one that was in that, that guy that tried to throw him off the platform there in, in Oregon that time. Because what? It's, God took that man, but the spirit just went on. And those same spirits from back there are here this morning and they're not out here flying. They're in people. And you can tell it by the nature, by how they treat you and how they treat God's Word, the manifested Word of the hour. Because, look at here, they sure don't have nothing to catch it with. Now, listen to what he says here. Identify yourself tonight in your present state. Now, where you're standing with some Bible character. Would you have been if you had lived in Noah's time? Where would you have been? What would you have been in the days of the Lord Jesus when he was on the earth in his flesh? Okay, so let's just go back. Okay, now we're back in the days of Noah. And here's this old, we'll call him a farmer or whatever he was, and he's got the word of the Lord, and he said God has told him to build this ark because he's going to judge this world, and there's going to come a, there's going to come a rain that's going to cause a flood, and everybody's going to be killed. Well, now we're back there. And we're, we're here looking around. Would you have been with the people that called Noah the nut? The fanatic? Or would you have been helping him build the ark? And when he said, get in, get in. Because, look here. If the spirit back there would have caused you to condemn Noah, that same spirit has come over here and has caused you to condemn the message that God sent this day. Because the spirits don't die. And then he says, how about if you would have been in the days of the Lord Jesus when he was on the earth in his flesh, what group would you have been identified with tonight? Yeah. So, let's go back to Jesus' day. Here's this wild man. Got no reputation, got no name, and what he what he does have, they have so tarnished the name. They said he was he come by way of a, a Roman soldier that pregnated Mary, and then he they come out of the worst town in the world, Nazareth. Could anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, that's what old Nathaniel said, and Philip said, look here. Come and see. So all of these things, and look here, there was just a little handful that believed him and followed him. And the whole rest of the religious world, because they believed their chief priest and so on, they thought he was a devil. So look here, go back. Now where would you have been? Would you have been walking with him with the disciples? 
Or would you have been with, with all the priests in the big churches and the big preachers that day? They said, oh, don't pay no attention to that guy. He's, he's, he's lost his mind. He's mad. He's crazy. Well, you'd either be one of the... Look, at there's no middle ground. You'd either be with Jesus or you'd be with them. It's just that simple. And so it comes down today. It's the same thing. Either you will be with Jesus Christ the manifested present tense word, or you'll be with some preacher, some church, somewhere, and you'll hold on to that. It's just that simple. So, at this time, whose side you on? Well, you don't have to tell me because as soon as we see anything, we know mm -hmm, because it's that old nature. It rises up. It can't handle the real true word of God. Because it has nothing to handle it with. Might be some impersonation, but other than that, nothing. Now, and what group would you identify tonight? Just think of it. What group are you identify when Paul was correcting them back in Corinthians for the things that they were doing? Well, look here. This word corrects the error. Paul brought the word to the Corinthian. He said it, the Corinthians was a book of corrections and he was correcting the people by the word because he said, let me tell you the things I write unto you are the commandments of God. And they either believed that or they didn't. Well, so what about it? You think the word was just for the Corinthians? The word comes right down to us. Look here, we've got the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. God has proved it, backed it up, vindicated it every which way. And the people just walk on like God never said anything. Well, it's always been that way. But there's a group of people that are elected to get it. And they have, and they will if they're part of it. So, he said, what group would you be identified with? See, just look back. It's a looking glass. This, you look in this word, and it's a looking glass. It lets you see just who you are. <clears throat> we can see where we're at. Whatever we were, now listen, whatever we were, we are now. So put yourself back in any of those days and whatever you were then, you are now. That's what we have to have been back there because the spirit that's in us now identified back there and that's the same spirit was on them back there. My, amen, my. He said, that ought to shake us and make us get out of our slumber that we're in, lukewarm. But you know, the Bible says we, we, get, we have to get that way so that he can spew the whole thing from his mouth. Did he promise it? Amen. And we all know he promised it and he will do it. The whole church is to be spewed from his mouth. Is that what he said over in Revelation 3? Lukewarm? Mm -hmm. Not hot or cold? Just a little tepid? Can get up and maybe sing a song and clap our hands a few times and the preacher get around and shout and jump around and, and put on a show or whatever. And then we all go home. Mm -hmm. Didn't. And you ask them a few minutes, well, what, what was the sermon for? I don't know, but we really had a good time. I, I can't remember really what he said. Okay. Ah. Hmm. So, did he promise it? Yes. The whole church is to be spewed from his mouth. Then out of the, out of the church comes the bride. That's the elected. Remember, just the other day, we taught on the election of God. There is an election of God. And God is elected, and they're going to be there. There's nothing can stop them. Now, 
If you would have lived in that day and belonged to the Sanhedrin, and like the World, World Council of Churches, he said, and your church was affiliated with that, they would have took all those things. And this man raised up, and you've seen him do the works of God, and nobody could withstand him. Yet, he was supposed to be a crazy man. Out of his head, he was. God forgive me for the expression, but he was one of those oddballs of that day. Well, Jesus was. And we come down to this day, that God had a man on the scene, that even the preachers come to him and said, Brother Brown, we know God's with you. But, uh, you know, we, got, we, we, we could really support you, but there's, there's a few things that you'd have to change. And he said, well, brother, what, what would those be? He said, well, you know how you, you, you get on the women. And he said, you know, that baptism thing and so on. Just a couple, a little thing. And he said, brother, just a couple of little things in the Word. And you have given me the compliment of calling me a prophet, and then you try to get me to go back on the thing that means more than life to me? Mm, yeah. Well. So, and a man raised up, and you see him do the works of God, and nobody could withstand him, yet he was supposed to be a crazy man. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, every time somebody comes along and is identified with the real, true Word of God, that's the first thing they say, the man is crazy. I just had a man tell me the other day, I just put a simple statement of what I believe, and he said, you are insane. Well, I said, I'm in pretty good country, company. I said, they said Jesus was crazy. He was, he was a madman. They said, Paul, that he had lost his mind. And they said the same thing about Brother Brown. So, good company, huh? Yeah, no doubt. But you know, and when somebody says that, that just shows their nature right off the bat. How do they know? Are they a psychiatrist? Are, are they the absolute truth teller of the word that what they believe is the absolute truth and what everybody else believes don't really count? Huh. Now, at this time, whose side? Whose side are you on? Are you on Christ? Are you out there with the religious world? Because they're, you look at them, there's, they're, there's one or the other. Now, the identification there in Phoenix. 1963, or with Paul, with the popular world-loving Demas forsaken him. Well, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, Paul had his Demas, and Brother Branham had his Demas. I, thought, I always thought, when I first read, I said, why would somebody name their son Demas when he's the one that that left Paul. But somebody did, and Brother Brown, he got in, in contact with the demons. And the demons saw him do the works of God, prayed for his mother that she was dying with cancer, and glory to God, boom, she was healed. Seen all these things, seen, seen the sign wonders, miracles, just like demons seen with Paul. And Paul, when the popular world of Endemus forsaken him for his Christian or so-called brethren of the popular opinion, when Paul stood on the word, Demas left him loving this present world. And so did the one down here. Rex, he was all this Demas down here. Before you know it, you know, he was the, the head of the full gospel businessmen's association. And right before you know it, he was all hooked up with the Catholics. And Brother Ram had told him over and over and over again, don't mess with that thing. Demas left him loving this present world. Left him because he was true to the word it was too straight for him. Why would you go with Demas or why would you 
Why would you go up with Paul? Check the word. What side would you have taken in this present strait at this time? Yet, them was professed Christians. Uh -huh. Yeah, Demas wasn't an infidel. He was supposedly a believer. And Paul said, all men has forsaken me. Yeah, that's what he said. Poor little guy. I've always alarmed at... Now, I want you to listen to this real close. Remember, Dr. Ern Baxter was the one that Brother Brown first and that went around because Brother Brown, when he first started out, this Dr. Baxter, Dr. Baxter would come out and he would kind of lay the foundations and so on with a little message and then Brother Brown would come out and make a few comments and they would go right straight to the healing line and so on. So, he had been used by the Lord. So, now, I, I was always alarmed at Dr. Ern Baxter. He said, you know, when I get up to heaven, first thing I'm going to do, I said, what is it, Brother Ern? He said, I'm going to walk right up to Demas and slap him in the face as hard as I can. What did he say a while ago about the nature? <clears throat> this man is telling the prophet that when I get to heaven and old Demas is there, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to slap him as hard as I can. Well, you know, he might want to get in that. You know, they got this thing called now, called this slap contest. And these, these two men stand up at this podium and they slap each other as hard as they can. And the one that is st still standing is a winner. Does that sound like the nature of a Christian? And I said, now earn. He said, I'm going to say, why did you leave Paul down there like that? I said, you really think he'll be there, Ern? I said, now be careful of your desire to slap him in the face. I said, I wouldn't want to be there where he was at. Uh-oh. Hmm. Demas left Paul the word. Well, he thought he was just leaving Paul, but he was leaving Christ. Because Christ is the word that Paul had. I wouldn't want to be where he was at. Maybe, see, have to do that. Well, the gear. Evidently, that man was a doctor and he had no spiritual discernment whatsoever. Talking about going to do violence in heaven? Well, my goodness, what would he do down here? If you crossed him up. Now, now I'm gonna this. Uh, I'm gonna change this. I saw these quotes. I wanted to drop them in because uh, it wouldn't take a whole message. But I wanted to make sure the people understand this, and thought it would be a good time to do it. And this is to show us the Father there in Tucson, 1963. A woman said. Who, do, who did he pray to, speaking of Jesus, who did he pray to in the Garden of Gethsemane on a street meeting one time? I said, I want to ask you something. You testified you had the Holy Ghost. Where is he at? Question. What do you pray to? Question. He's on the inside of you, of course. <laughs> Look here. He said, where is he at? Well, I know where he's at. He's inside of here. That's where he said he would be. He'd come in here when I was born again. He'd come into the people on the day of Pentecost, and he's never left. He's inside the people. He's not out there, wherever that there is, flying around somewhere, or sitting on a chair. Oh, well, he's up there on his throne. Yeah, well, Brother Brown said the throne is in the heart of man. 
But I know that's, that's just too simple. So he said now, where is he at and who do you pray to? Well, if he's on the inside of you, and look here, we used to say, there was a song about the royal telephone. And I always told the people, I said, this royal telephone is a local call. Because call him up. Call him up. Tell him right here. Talk to him. That's why Jesus said you can enter into your closet. Because when you get in the closet, it's just you and him. And you can talk to him. You can tell him. You can pour your heart out. Ask him what you have need of. Because he's on the inside. He's not off somewhere. And he said, who do you pray to? You pray to the one that's on the inside. You're talking about, you're talking about a personal God. The one that said, I'll go with you even in you. And the people think he's off somewhere else. My. So, evidently she didn't know. But now we know where he's at and who do we pray to. Because he's on the inside. If, well, we have the Spirit with measure, and He had it without measure. We are sons and daughters of God, like taking a spoonful of water out of the ocean, and He's the whole ocean. But the same chemicals that's in the spoon is in the whole ocean. It's quantity, but the same quality. Therefore, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. God in us. Yes, notice. God in His universe. God in His Word. God in His Son. But the main thing now is come to God in us. But, you know, people seem to have such a time with that. Now, he mentions this one more time just to kind of nail it down. Now, this is him calling Jesus on the scene there in Chicago. Now, Jesus being a man, and this is what always messed them up. Jesus being man physically was tired, weary. Now, laying there tired, virtue had gone from him, and then him being God, he could only do what? Now, you say, how could he be God and be man? See, there is the mystery. Okay, well, Brother Bam was supposed to tell us the mystery. He said, there's a mystery. So, see, in body he was man. In body he was man. In spirit he was God. There's a mystery. In body he was man. In spirit he was God because it was God veiled by the flesh. See, someone asked me, said, well, then how did, who did he pray to in the Garden of Gethsemane? I said, I'll answer you when you answer this. Do you believe you have the Holy Ghost? Yes. I said, then who do you pray to? Where is he at? When you are praying to him, when you claim you have him, and yet you're praying to him, see, People just, they just get some little idea and run wild with it. You see, it, that's the way it goes. And that's about, look here, they forget all about, they forget truth, and they get some little wild thing, some kind of idea they thought of. Maybe the devil gave it to them, and they say, oh, yes. Well, no doubt. The people doing that. So, that mystery's over. He was a man in body, but he was God in spirit. He said, I, it's not me that does the work. It's my Father that dwells in me. And we come to find out his Father was the Holy Ghost. Wow. So simple. Now, flashing red light of the sign of his coming there in Jeffersonville, 1963. Are you still just a church member? How you done wrong? Look and research your life over tonight. Men and women, look at yourself. Look at your own faults. What? At your present state now. If Christ was on earth preaching this, you say, 
If you would have, I would have heard him preach that. I would have repented. If you would, this is his own word tonight. And you'll do it now. If you're without God and you know him. What's he saying? If you've been back there, he's here today. He's here. Christ is here. This is his word. This is him. This is the one you... You, re you, you recognize and you accept because it's Him. It's Him in this present time that you're living right now. Not 2,000 years ago. Now. This is Jesus Christ now. So, at this time, whose side? Well, it's very simple. It's either one or the other. He said, oh, you say, I, well, I belong to church. I spoke in tongues. Uh, I, I know, not now. Now, we're laying that aside. Look at yourself. Check your life now with God's Word. And are you that person to walk away and say, I don't care what the Bible says, Brother Brown. I think you're wrong. It ain't me that's wrong. If there's any wrong about it, it's the Word. So we don't care about nothing else but what the Word says. And God interprets His Word by bringing it to pass. So... When you see the very word that was promised for this day, when you see it come to pass, that is the word. How much more simple could it be? And these people, they have got the word so balled up and stretched out and with their denominational interpretations. We was talking about the other day about, well, you know, everybody's thumping on their Bible. Oh, I believe the Bible. I said, no doubt they believe the Bible with their own interpretation of it, with a carnal interpretation. Every time they see something, they say, yep, yeah, that's exactly what I believe. Mm -hmm. does, it, does it line up with God's revelation, what God has manifested this day? No, it's a million miles from it. Does that bother them? No. You, you tie him with a friend of Terry somewhere. My goodness, he'll run you around and around and around. He'll bring out a whole library of people and miss the whole thing. That Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ. God has made him both Lord and Christ. But no, I don't No, I won't believe it. Where, where's the majority at? All of them Trinitarians. And boy, they, you can't move them. Why? Because that's what they believe. And you don't know God yet. And you're not sure that if Jesus should come at this hour and you're not ready to go, why would you trifle when seeing death is so close and when when see the end is so close well look here this was back in 1960 how about now 2023 I did the other day that earthquake in Turkey what did they say 46,000 people boom just that quick one morning everything was nice and quiet and still and all of a sudden the earth gave way and look at here. You can see the, the sign. He just preached the message, 63. The flashing red light signs of his coming. And look, look at here. We've got almost 60 years to, to look back and see everything. And the people look back on everything. They can't see anything. They're, they're so wrapped up in their own beliefs and in and that their own church entity and their own church teachings, no matter what he does, you just can't shake them out of it. Well, there are some people that's been shook out of it because they're following Christ, the Christ of this day, the manifested word, the present tense Christ that's come on the scene. That's where he's at. And he is living in his body. Now, three kinds of believers. Remember, he said there was three kinds. There's believers, make-believers, and unbelievers. Jeffersonville, 1963. Now, 
Look, you're in one of these classes. Okay? You're either a believer, a make-believer, or an unbeliever. In your present state right now, the present state of mind that you hear in this visible audience, and you that will be the invisible audience on this tape. Uh-oh. Now, he's talking to the people there. That was in Jeffersonville, 1963. And now, he's talking to us. Because, he said, the invisible audience on this tape in your present state of mind after listening to this tape. Well, this is part of the tape. And these quotes I'm talking about this morning have come from the message that Brother Brown was given to give to us. So there's no excuses. Well, you say that was 63. No. He said it's right here meets us this morning. Proves to what class you're in. Uh-oh. What class? Believer? Make-believer? Or unbeliever? You listen to this tape this morning. It proves what class you're in. It tells exactly where you are. Whether you are a believer in the Word and will stay with it. Uh-oh. A believer in the Word. The seventh seal. The coming of the Lord. No one knew it was His coming. The rapture is a revelation. We've been resurrected out of dark denominationalism. All these things. Look here. He didn't come to bring us a denominational leftover message. He came to bring us the true Word of God. That was His commission. He was to forerun the coming Word, which is Christ. But, mm -mm. So now, and so you are a believer in the Word and will stay with it. Whether you walk down and shut that tape off. See, that tells what you've done. You don't want to listen to it. You shut it off and say, well, I don't want to listen to that. That's the unbeliever, see? You won't stop to test and see it's the truth or not. Or just, now look at here, or just hang around and trying to find some fault with it. There's a bunch of them that hung around. Some of them hung around for 20 years, 30 years. And finally one day, all of a sudden they discovered that the cloud picture was made by a rocket. A rocket was shot up in the air and drew the face of Jesus up there perfectly. It hung around for all those years and finally come to such as that. Or just hanging around and trying to find some fault, then you know where you are. Two, it tells, I know where they are. They're right there where Demas is at. Demas left Paul. And Brother Brown said, look here, if you think you're going to go to heaven and slap him, you better check it out again. Mm -hmm. Demas was a so-called Christian. But what did he do? He forsook the word. He thought, oh, well, he was just forsaking Paul. But Paul had the word. That was what his commission was. You know where you are, too. It tells you. God help us to believe it and stand on it. Well, that's what the believer is doing. He believes it. He stands on it and be loyal to it and obey the word for he is the word. Do you believe that? Amen, Brother Brown. I believe that. Absolutely. I don't care what they say or what they do or what they call me or nothing else. I believe that Jesus Christ has revealed himself to me personally. And I'm standing on that. 
And it lines up with the scripture. It lines up with the message. It lines up because it is the truth of God's word for this day. Look here, I'm not having to go back to some old denomination and say, what do you think about this? Because he said they had nothing right. So why would I want to take any of that? But how many beings this morning is standing on that? Looking for the same thing. I put on here the other day, I said, you know, what the, the word test is. I said, if you go to a denominational church and any of your teaching is like theirs, you need to throw it in the trash. And most of these people, they could go say amen to about at least 50% of what they got because they're all looking for the same thing. They're looking for the same kind of rapture, the same kind of resurrection, the same kind of coming, the same, 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 same millennium, same, oh, they're looking for the devil to run wild and everything else. This is Satan's Eden. These things have got to happen, and they are happening. God knew they would happen. But he also knew that he would have a people down here that would stay with his word. Now, I want to close with this little statement here out of the token in Bakersfield, 1964. Oh God, now he's making a prayer. And I believe that prayer is still, in, still alive today because it's the word of God. Oh God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you will, you will look down upon this audience and calm through it. I pray that the great Holy Spirit who is here now, present, showing Jesus Christ to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, there is no chance for Satan to try to rub around it here. You are identifying yourself standing here in human flesh amongst us and identifying yourself by the token that you would identify, that would identify you. The token is to identify Jesus Christ, his resurrection, and here he is. Now, identifying him doing the same that he did when he stood here in a corporal body. But look at here. That's not the corporal. He was in flesh. And he said he's doing the same thing as he stood here when he was in a corporal body. But look at here. They want to see the corporal body of 2,000 years ago. When the things that was done in that body was done through the prophet's body. And what was it? It was not the prophet. It was the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Christ in the prophet doing the thing. Just as it was the Holy Spirit in the body of Jesus. Because the body of Jesus was a man. But oh no. They got everybody you talking about him being here in flesh? And they'll tell you, you're crazy. Well, amen. So he stood here in a corporal body. Oh, Father, may the people see and realize how all these scriptures and things are perfectly fulfilled. Perfectly fulfilled. Look here, everything that God said and he would do this day was fulfilled in the ministry of the prophet William Branham. And now the ministry has come from the prophet to the believer, to the bride, to the wife, because now we are to take the word that he brought we are to prophesy that word again. To let this generation know what God did in that generation. And it's the same God all the time. And look here, you either at this present day, you either believe it or you don't. Either you're up here where Christ is, this present tense, or you're back here in some old church somewhere, all covered up in darkness and claiming you walking in the light. It's just that simple. So, 
the present, Jesus Christ, the Word, manifested Word is on the scene. And look here. Who will walk with that? Amen. It proves. That's the proof right there. You have to walk with Jesus Christ, the present tense Word. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for all these proofs. We thank you for all these examples. Lord, the Bible is full of them. Lord, but what good is the example if nobody gets anything from the example? If they continue on in the same way, doing the same things, there was supposed to be a change. There was supposed to be something happen down here that would call. And Lord, it has called. It has shook the elect. It has shook them away. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. There was a shout given at midnight. The bridegroom's coming. Go you out to meet him. And Lord, that predestinated group did, Lord. And we're telling it over and over and over again because it's exactly what you've done in this day. And Lord, now we are the very body of Jesus Christ. We are that physical, corporal body of Him on the earth doing exactly what He said He would do in this day. And Lord, we're so glad that You predestinated us for this hour, Lord, to be able to tell the whole complete truth, the revelation of Jesus Christ. How we thank You and love and praise You this day. Give it all to You in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.